American citizen in exchange for an Afghan tribal leader. Bashir Nurzai was serving life in a U.S. prison on drugs charges while contractor Mark Freerichs had been detained in Afghanistan since early 2020. Heidi Jo Castro reports. My name is Mark Freerichs. Today is 28 November 2021. A proof-of-life video published nearly two years into his captivity showed Mark Freericks in Afghanistan. The former U.S. naval officer and civilian engineer had been kidnapped by the Taliban in January 2020 and reportedly held by the Haqqani network. Now he's free. His return is the culmination of many, many months of tireless uh, and effective work uh, by so many colleagues in, uh, in our government. The, the Taliban released Frerix in exchange for Haji Bashir Norzai, an Afghan tribal leader who had been serving a life sentence in the U.S. for opium smuggling. Norzai was granted clemency and received a hero's welcome at the Kabul airport. My exchange, I think, with God willing, can lead to peace between Afghanistan and America. An American was released, and I am also free with the help of the Islamic Emirate and Mujahideen. In a statement announcing Freerich's release, U.S. President Joe Biden made no mention of the prisoner swap, but said Freerich's freedom required difficult decisions to be made. Freerich's sister thanked U.S. officials and said what Biden did was right in order to save her brother's life. The Trump administration had tried and failed to secure Frederick's release and was criticized for not making it a requirement of the U.S. Taliban peace deal. His continued detention remained a major impediment to improved U.S.-Afghanistan relations after the Taliban takeover last year. There was a concern uh, that after the uh, al-Zawahiri's killing in Kabul, uh, apparently there won't be any contacts between the two sides. But uh, this release indicates that uh, despite the concerns, as I said, shared by, by the U.S. and the uh, Western community, the U.S. is uh, still uh, in contact with the Taliban and keeping a sort of engagement. At least one other American remains hostage in Afghanistan. That is filmmaker Ivor Shearer, who was detained in Kabul in August. Biden says while there is still much work to be done on many other cases, the release of Freericks is a demonstration of the U.S.'s commitment to freeing all hostages abroad. Heidi Jo Castro, Al Jazeera, Washington. Fires Zaland is a professor of political science at Kabul University. He joins us now live from Kabul. Uh, professor, what's your take on this prisoner swap? Uh, uh, Mark's uh, detention and this uh, uh, swap was waiting for uh, more than uh, two years, uh, while uh, Bashir Mirza has been uh, detained in New York 2005. So uh, more than a decade, uh, he has passed almost 17 and a half years. He passed in a uh, uh, federal jail in uh, New York. So uh, this swap was some kind of milestone for Taliban to uh, uh, to achieve and for uh, Biden administration uh, uh, bringing back Mark, who, who was the last remaining uh, American uh, citizen in Afghanistan after the withdrawal of uh, uh, 2021, uh, August 31st, uh, was the last achievement that they should have. So uh, it's a win-win situation for both sides. OK, win-win situation. But is, is it going to pave the way for improved relations between the U.S. and Afghanistan? Uh, I uh, really don't think so that uh, it will uh, somehow uh, undermine those conditions for uh, bringing uh, uh, harmony into the uh, dialogue that the U.S. and uh, Afghan Taliban are uh, uh, holding so far. Because uh, the uh, condition for uh, recognizing the uh, Afghanistan government, the Taliban, uh, Amarat Islami, uh, are very tough uh, to be achieved by Taliban inclusivity. Uh, women rights, uh, girls' school, uh, 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 applying or implementing the Doha uh, agreement. And then uh, 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 Taliban are uh, somehow waiting for uh, U.S. Uh, legitimacy, political recognition, delisting, uh, uh, taking off the uh, travel ban, uh, uh, the sanctions should be taken off. Uh, these conditions seem uh, very tough, and I think uh, uh, there are so many uh, other things. There is so much to do regarding uh, bringing some kind of understanding to the uh, deadlock that has been so far there. 
Nonetheless, the two parties are talking. I mean, uh, this prisoner swap is, uh, is the result of, of these ongoing discussions be between the two, these, these negotiations. That at least has got to be a positive, hasn't it? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, diplomatic uh, struggles, usually they, uh, they somehow, uh, uh, once they achieve such goals, uh, they somehow celebrate uh, their achievements. And it's, uh, I think, a big achievement for uh, Biden administration to uh, bring back Mark to home. And uh, for Taliban, after 17 and a half years, uh, one of their main supporters, uh, one of their founders, Bashir Nurzai, to bring him back to uh, Kabul. But uh, uh, the conditions were different uh, from uh, uh, August uh, uh, 15 back. Uh, when uh, uh, Mark was detained uh, uh, in 2020, uh, there were uh, conditions different from uh, currently. Talibans were fighting the, the U.S. and uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, troops. They were presented in Kabul and they were supporting the Republican. Uh, but now as uh, Taliban took over the government, uh, uh, Taliban are facing uh, much more bigger uh, troubles and problems rather than uh, only a swap of uh, uh, prisoners. Uh, they need recognition. They need uh, legitimacy. They need uh, uh, the uh, sanctions, uh, the frozen assets to be unfrozen, and they, uh, but, uh, they need to be integrated into the international community. And Professor, what, what does that mean then for the prospects of the release of the final, the, the last remaining American prisoner? Uh, so, uh, uh, I think that these diplomatic talks, they might continue, but they might continue in a different direction because uh, the expectations from international communities are very high, while Taliban may uh, not be able to deliver those uh, uh, expected results uh, soon. For example, the girls' school, uh, allowing girls to go to school, uh, uh, we are already in the second year of our education. But Taliban have uh, not allowed girls to be in school second year. It means we need to wait 2023 or 24 for new uh, education year. Uh, this year, there is no the women rights, for example, the freedom of speech, the inclusivity. All these things are pending. And also, uh, from uh, U.S. international community side, the delisting of the Taliban, the travel ban is there. The bounties on some of the Taliban leadership members are there. They have been not uh, taking those uh, uh, steps forward. So uh, we are still in a deadlock. Uh, we hope that uh, there will be some compromise on these uh, uh, pending issues and uh, we will have a way forward. Good to talk to you, Professor. Many thanks indeed, uh, Faiz Zalan there thanks. in Kabul.